Hi, this is John Tisafari from The Post Collective, and congratulations for downloading and trying out Scratch Lab. So what I'm going to do is uh, walk you through installation, starting the program, creating a new project, and uh, loading media so that you can conform, color correct, and render footage. So by the end of this video, you should be able to walk through all of these things yourself. Uh, feel free to follow along. Uh, first thing we'll do is just double click the install package and then step through the prompts. And Scratch Lab will be installed relatively quickly. It's a very powerful program that doesn't take a lot of space on your hard drive or in your system. And we're ready to get started. Now we're licensed, and here we are in the home screen. Click here to create a project. Type in the project name. And select a format, maybe a resolution and frame rate, or do a custom, as we will here. And click on project to set the media directory. The default media directory is something that's required by every Scratch project. to select it. You can see here it's been entered to the database and I can enter my project and get started. And here we are in Scratch Labs Construct. This is the first screen you'll see in the project uh, that you've entered. It's, it's really the core of Scratch Lab. The construct is, you think of it as a multi-dimensional area where you can arrange in time. You can create non-destructive versions. Now the first thing we'll do is load some media. So let me load a single clip browse to a location and choose to open this particular piece of media. It's stuck on my cursor. I can drop it in any slot. I can preview the contents by scrolling along the top and I can preview some of the clip properties by clicking on the bottom here. Uh, if you want to move a clip around you just click and drag and then drop into another slot. If you want to copy, there's a couple ways to do that. First, you can press first select the clip, then copy selected, and wherever this blue bar is located, you could paste the shot. You can even paste multiple versions. It's going to be handy for stacking various uh, color grades. That way, refer to uh, before and after or show multiple looks. Scratch Labs will always consider the bottom clip as the active clip, and anything above will be a version. And it's easy to change orders, just click and drop. You can also do a multiple selection set by pressing Control and click dragging to select all the clips you wish to attached to the cursor and in this case I'm going to bin these and I can also hit control A on my keyboard and select everything in the construct and bin that as well. Now you saw the single clip selection for a more fully featured recursive selection click load layers and browse to the root directory from which you wish to pull the media files in this case, I'm going to select this Margarita H264 folder. Underneath that, you can see subdirectories, and these do contain the media, but I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to choose a file mask just for quick time. So I am constraining my selection set to only quick time files. And you can see it'll quickly load all of the files that I've found in that directory. A quick note on versioning, if you want to create a version very quickly, you can select everything. Again, control A on the keyboard, copy that selection, and paste. And here you can see now I've got two versions. If I make changes here and don't make changes on the second row, then I will have a before and after. 
Or conversely, I could have two separate grades, two different looks. In any case, I'm going to undo this. You can uh, undo in most areas of Scratch Lab, including the construct. And I'm going to now conform my footage. What we have here is a, a horizontal and a vertical arrangement in the slots in the construct. And as mentioned, the vertical slot arrangement is versions and horizontal is time. But right now there is no edit. It's just one clip lined up after another. If I want to uh, conform using an EDL or Final Cut XML or ALE, just click this button here, load conform. I'm going to set my file mask to Final Cut XML because that's what I've been provided with by the editor. And load that XML project file. And you can see here the assembly window, which has all the events of the XML project. I'm going to match time code and name. And you can see here it found a match for every entry. I'm going to assemble these to a new construct. Click Assemble. And here we are. Now in this particular construct, which is called Festival Invitation, you can see a sub-construct. And that is a really powerful feature of Scratch Lab version 6, multiple video tracks. We can conform any number of video tracks simultaneously. And you can see here, there's one piece of footage on track two. And our main track, Festival Invitation, has all the rest of our clips on it. And to go into the editor, we can right click and click on editor, or we can press play and move to the edit module. Now the editor is uh, one of the very, very powerful modules in Scratch Lab. You can see here it's divided into video, audio, and tracks. Uh, video, we can adjust uh, slip in and out points of our source footage, the speed of our source footage. For instance, in this case, we would be running at half speed. Uh, we can also set offsets, we can flop, flip, and um, here are some timeline settings. We can add transitions, we can change our start point of a clip, the duration of a clip, how it's played, and um, whether or not it's a ripple. And there's a powerful tool in Scratch Lab called the Shot Analyzer. Shot Analyzer will look at the footage on the timeline and analyze pixels from one frame to the next and if there are enough changes, changes past a certain threshold, it will suggest uh, cut points. And um, another tab here would be audio and in this case we don't have any audio but this is an area for audio waveforms. For instance if I were to load a piece of audio you would see it represented here. And it can be adjusted through slip. Um, it can be loaded on a clip basis or for the entire timeline. And here are our video tracks. In this case, we have two tracks, a main track and a track one. Now you'll notice that currently the image is larger than my actual project. The original files were in 1080p, but we're currently working in 720p. So I'm going to go over to the process module. By right-clicking anywhere in the interface, I can bring up this menu that allows me to navigate from one module to the next. Currently, we're in edit. By clicking on process, the process module is a place where we can insert plugins. Scratch Lab reads OFX standard plugins. Um, you can also make adjustments. In this case, my source footage is QuickTime. I could make adjustments to how the QuickTime is read. And, uh, but what we're going to do is take a look at the Shot Config tab. And here we can see what our scaling is and how to make changes to it. I'm going to click the All button, which will allow me to resize all the files simultaneously. And you can see here they all fit into the correct scaling now. 
Now let's go back to the editor and take a look at the interface here now. New in version 6 is multiple tracks of video. In this case I've got two tracks and you can see that here. What I'm going to do is select all tracks so I can see them all. And what you can see here is that on track 1, this track here, is this clip with a fade and the subsequent clips are all on the main track. Now let's do some color correction. Now right click, move to the matrix. And here we are in the matrix. This is the Scratch Lab color correction module. And there's quite a few things we can do here. In the source, tab, we can change our color space to various included mappings, or we can actually also load up a LUT. Levels function as print light offsets. Reset this back to linear. Reset my gamma. In levels, we have print light offsets luminance or red, green, and blue. We also have pre-gain functions. Again, in master and red, green, and blue. And some other tools uh, that you can explore at your leisure. The color tab is the familiar trackball interface. This is uh, a place where we can just click and drag our cursor around to affect lift, gamma, and gain color vectors. We can also affect the master lift, gamma, and gain. Now I want to introduce uh, swipe gestures in Scratch. We've got swipes to the side. In this case we're going to bring up uh, scopes. Very, very useful for the color correction. We've got a waveform here a vector scope here and a histogram here. And we can modify which tools, which scopes are displayed and how they're displayed. I like this layout myself. And we can also swipe up to bring up a toolbar along the top. We can show a pipeline view. This gives us an overview of the data flow. And uh, the audio mixer Scratch has a very, very powerful set of audio synchronizing and uh, mixing tools. Let's uh, achieve through this mixing channel, through this mixing interface. We can also look at individual red, green, blue, or any combination thereof. Uh, luminance and alpha, which in this case we don't have. Uh, another great thing is the magnifying glass. And uh, the magnifier lets us not only look at zoomed in areas of the image, it also analyzes the pixel in the crosshairs. And you can zoom out or zoom in. And a swipe up will open and close this toolbar. I'll swipe to the side, we'll open and close the scopes. And a shortcut for color correction with the trackballs, press either the 2, 3, or 4 key on the keyboard, and you can activate, in this case I'm pressing down 3, and I can just click anywhere in the interface and drag my cursor and my virtual trackball is made quite efficient. You can also access all these color corrections in a numeric format. You can see here offset, pre-gain, lift gamma gain. We also have uh, an S-curve tool, which is really nice. This, this adds a nice filmic look very easily. Uh, we can defocus or sharpen our footage. And if you uh, choose to adjust saturation, you can do so in color A, which is pre-lift gamma gain, 
or color B, which is after any color corrections that get done with those tools. You've also got a very powerful curve tool here. And I'm going to just tweak this curve a little bit. Probably do this better served on a different image. Just add a little bit of punch to this quickly with the curve tool. And uh, it's a very advanced function. Now, Scratch Lab has a reduced set of tools, just restricted to the primaries. There is no secondaries grading in Scratch Lab. Uh, but it's amazing how much you can do with just the primaries. Scratch's tools are so powerful. In a lot of cases, you don't really need to go further than that, especially in the context of onset or dailies grades, and, uh, which is really where Scratch Lab excels. The output portion of the construct is where we set up renders. Now you can see here some basic controls for format, uh, resizing filter. Obviously, we've got frame rate, aspect ratio, etc. I'm going to just change this real quick. And our default node here, I personally am going to add one node here. And in order to be able to render two outputs simultaneously, we could add two separate output nodes. In this case, I've got one that's TIFF. I'm going to change this to DPX and change this to 10-bit. And uh, this one here I'm not going to be concerned with because I'm going to add a QuickTime plugin. In order to render QuickTimes in Scratch, we are going to use the QuickTime plugin layer. So you highlight the node, click the play button here, and make sure you're in the FX Controls tab. Click Insert to bring up the plugin browser. Select the QuickTime Export plugin. And you can see here, we now have some controls for making adjustments. I'm going to set this for H.264. And I'll leave the rest of the uh, settings as is. And you can see now, a new node has been added to the, con to the output portion of the construct. And I will select this node first. I will add it to the queue. And then I will select the QuickTime output node and add that. When I show the process queue, you can see both are represented here. And then I'll press start. And the rendering starts almost immediately. And the render is completed. Close the queue window. And I'll add a new construct. And then we can load these rendered shots. I'm going to select the render directory so that it'll just pick up everything beneath. And there we go. I should have both. This would be the DPX sequence. And here is the QuickTime. We've installed the program, licensed it, loaded media, color corrected it and rendered and there you have it I hope you enjoyed your first experience with scratch lab